Will you join me in welcoming the beautiful Marquis? Your portable electronic devices, 
and leave them in mute or silence mode for the duration of the flight. We will be dimming our lights for takeoff, and for your convenience, please proceed for departure. I was dreaming in color. 
I wanted to be on television, a dancer, a singer. I wanted to be a secretary, own my own business, be a mom and a stewardess. Something and, and there were still hundreds. 
hundreds of girls that were after me. And we were lined up by height and mixed and match. We did our routine, our dance routine, and if they called your number, you were supposed to stay and repeat the number again. Well, they narrowed that down to a kick line, and then they narrowed that down again. Oh, this was an all-day process. But at the end of the day, and all the cuts, I was still there. Well, they thanked us, and I smiled. Grabbed my dance gear and left with the rest of the dancers. When I got home, I practiced the routines over and over, just in case I got a call that call. Well, a few days had gone by, and I received a call. It was Melissa from Radio City inviting me to the callbacks. She said, the callbacks will be Thursday between 10 and 1 p.m. Great, I thought. Now, I temp downtown in Manhattan, so I have to take an early lunch, take the train to Midtown, and then walk over to 51st Street. So, that morning, I was more than excited. I had everything ready. My clothes, my shoes, my music, it was all set. Now, at work, I had told a few people that I had gotten this call back. So as I was leaving, they wished me luck, and out I ran. Oh, my timing was perfect. I took the train up to 50th Street, got off, walked over to 51st and 6th Avenue, that stage door just in time to see a flood of dancers leaving the building. Oh my God, I was paralyzed. What happened? Well, just at that moment, John, the doorman, said, Honey, wait a minute. I'll call up to the rehearsal hall and I'll let them know that you're here. I stood there fighting back tears. I tried to blend into the woodwork as the dancers continued to leave the building. Finally, Melissa came down to get me, and she escorted me up to the large rehearsal hall where we had our auditions. When I got up there, the producer, Bruce Michael, was standing there, and the first thing he said to me was, is everything okay? We thought something had happened to you. I was so discombobulated. I said, I thought that they said I could come any time between 10 and 1. He said not to worry. I was fine. The panel, the audition panel, was sitting there and they were smiling. They were so inviting. And they told me, it's okay. It's okay. Don't rush. Do you remember the routines? Yes, I said. I remember the routines. And I got my dance gear on. Got on the dance floor. They said, well, we'll go over the routine once with you. After I finished the audition, they asked me to sing and do an on-camera interview. What does it mean to be a Rockette to you? And why do you want to be a Rockette? Well, when I was growing up in dancing school, all my teachers auditioned to be Rockettes. So I thought it was the natural thing to do. Ever since I was a little girl, there's only been one thing I want, I want, I want what every little red-blooded girl in America could want, I want, I want what I have wanted since the first day I learned how to want. I want to be a rocket. Okay, but most of you in the room, you understand that back in the early 90s, being a rockette was very pristine, and I was just a little bit I want to dance until dawn. I want to be a rockette. That's what my heart is set upon. I want to be a rockette. I want to hear the crowd roar. I want to feel the magic when they scream for more and more and more and more and I never wanted to be somebody's wife. The suburban life seemed a pity. 
Macy's Parade. Well, once again, the Christmas show closed and I was back out on the pavement, pounding it, looking for a job, going to auditions. I attempted downtown by uh, Wall Street. I was a secretary, a typist, receptionist, cold caller. I was even a fitness instructor. Mm -hmm. And being a fitness instructor, whew, that also was a lot of hard work. <sighs> but I had to do anything to make rent, pay the car payment, I had to eat, I had to take dance classes, and I still had to take voice lessons. How?
doing this evening. Once again, we want to welcome you to the Trap Down Lounge. Oh, 
business. I can't tell you how much fun I had being an impersonator. It was like being magically transformed, where you could be anything and anyone you wanted. It was like a dream. But I had to draw a line at Rick James. <laughs> yes, show business was fun, but it is a business. And that business, when it gets tough, it gets pretty rough out there.